today we've got a really nice looking Coleman 202 Professional. Well, you might not think it's nice looking, but to me, it's beautiful. It looks in stupidly good shape. Uh, sure, it's dirty, but let me show you the, uh, the label here on it. The label is in almost perfect shape. The, uh, the vent hood, the ventilator on it has, has very little uh, loss of enamel. The bottom is quite possibly the cleanest bottom I've ever seen on any one of these uh, 202s. So it is uh, in really good shape. It's just dirty. So uh, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go through this and uh, this will probably be a couple of step video and just kind of show you what I do with some of these uh, unknown lanterns. Um, one thing that I, I've done two things on this already. I have, uh, I have replaced the, uh, the gasket on here and um, so it needed some help. Or have I? Oh no, I haven't. No, I haven't. I thought I'd replace the gasket. So I've got to replace the gasket because it needs some help. I have uh, serviced the pump though. So I did, uh, I did pull it out and um, it, it definitely pumps and holds pressure now. So that's a good thing. And um, it, it, yeah, it might need a little bit of uh, work on it too because it seems like it's kind of sliding past the, um, past the, uh, the, the, the leather here, but at any rate, um, so we'll need to look at the gasket. We need to kind of see what's going on under the hood because it's hard to see uh, underneath. So we'll go ahead and take this off and uh, see what we got. So yeah, see the vent's in really nice shape. That's good. The, uh, the, the globe is a red letter globe. It's in good shape, just dirty. Set that over here. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I can do is I can steal another cap from another lantern and, uh, and see how it holds pressure. I could have I swore I changed that out, but uh, we'll just go ahead and, and cheat and, uh, and use a cap from another lantern over here actually from a stove and we'll see how it uh, how it pressures up if we can get any hiss out of it okay and absolutely nothing so normally this means that this is yeah so the tip cleaner is frozen. So all right, so this one, this one had some really foul smelling fuel in it. So the, the tip cleaner's gummed up. I'm not getting any flow through here. And um, so basically what we need to do, we'll dump the pressure, which it's holding fine, but you can definitely smell that they had regular unleaded in there. And we'll, um, we'll pull the top of this off and see what we can see. Don't mind the rain in the back. I hope it's not uh, not too obnoxious. Didn't really think about that when I was uh, planning to do the video here. So let's see what we got. So, so I can see that the air tube here in the bottom is completely occluded with like a, a mud dauber nest or spider or something. And then when I look at the at the end of the uh, the generator, it looks like it's got very much the same. Something else has built like a mud nest on it. So that's probably why we're not getting any flow. So what we can do real quick to check to see if we've got flow out of the valve is that we'll uh, we'll pull the generator out. I guess it's good that the uh, the needle was stuck. Let's see if it's damaged. Oh yeah. The needle is completely missing, so uh, this one's probably going to need a, uh, a replacement, uh, at least pricker. The generator's probably fine, but the pricker is ruined because the, uh, the needle is gone. We can't move this, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of heat from a butane torch to loosen it up. 
especially since everything is so gummy. And you can see how it's kind of yellow, kind of that yellow tint. And that yellow tint is uh, like either uh, old gasoline or old kerosene or something that's kind of gummed up on it. So, uh, so yeah, we'll want to clean that off too. But this one is a, let's see, November, no, October 1963. But boy, it's in just beautiful shape. So uh, you can kind of see how some of the nickel is coming through here. Oh, that's a big one. And uh, so I'll take some of these washers off and we'll start applying a little bit of heat. I usually soften the, uh, the heat out quite a bit and then um, I try to hit it from all sides. I try to get all of this heated up, try to get this rod kind of heated up because that rod is going to carry that heat into the packing. You don't want to go too far with this because you can kind of damage the packing and the packing for these here on the small side, it's not available. So you have to use like a uh, graphite rope, which may or may not be a good solution. So uh, I prefer just to kind of use some gentle heat. And butane is like I've mentioned before, about a thousand degrees cooler than propane. And uh, it's a lot easier to control. I do have a propane torch, obviously, but I'm not putting that on there. That would be way too much. So um, just give this a little bit more and we'll see if we don't get uh, Get some movement out of it here. Yep, there she goes. Just as easy as pie. No problems whatsoever. So, so remember that trick. You don't need to take it apart. You don't need to do anything drastic. You just need to apply a little bit of heat, get that varnish to kind of loosen up in there, and then uh, everything will be fine. So we're gonna crank down this, we're gonna close this up, and we're gonna get some pumps in here, see if we get airflow out of this. Okay, moment of truth. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, plenty of flow. So, we know that... <laughs> God, that stuff's nasty. So we know that we've got a uh, we've got a blocked uh, generator, and we've got a blocked air tube here. So let's let's kind of work on this air tube a little bit. Um, I've got a uh, little wire. I'm just going to kind of poke in here, and uh, yeah. See, this is this is what we talk about when we say, "Hey, check to make sure that your your air burner your air tubes are are not blocked with, you know." bug scuzz and uh, this one definitely was so and the thing is is that yep there's there's somebody in there <laughs> so, so yeah we're gonna have to kind of dig them out yeah that looked like they did real well because uh, once they got in there the um, probably the fumes and everything else are probably killed them but, oh yeah, there's just all sorts of stuff. Yep, all kinds of spiders and stuff and snacks for the, uh, for the baby. Ah, and there's even a second, I don't even think you can see it, but there's a second layer of mud up in there too, which we're gonna go ahead and try to poke out. Hopefully there's not a third, because my uh, little, piece of wire here only goes so far. We'll use this. This is probably a little better. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff in there. So I've got this thing, which is uh, good for knocking this out. There's just a large amount of stuff coming out of there. So yeah, if anyone ever tried to start this as it was, they would just be wholly unsuccessful. And this one, <coughs> Ooh, man, that's just foul. Um, the uh, I might just go ahead and take the uh, take the burner tube off of this because uh, it's not too hard to get off. Uh, loosen that up. And then we can kind of see how blocked that is, which it is quite, quite blocked. 
So yeah, lots of, uh, lots of, uh, <laughs> and look at this. Inside of the, the burner tube, there's yet another one, right? So this is one you can't even see, it's around the corner. And, uh, and sure enough, there's another one in there. So um, yeah, lots of uh, bug nests in this. And uh, it's actually inside the little, uh, the, uh, the, the little adapter. So that one's not too bad to clean out. But um, yeah, this would cause people no end of uh, trouble because you could look in there and run the rod up there and say, hey, you know, everything's fine. And normally I don't take them apart this far, but um, sure enough, this definitely, definitely needed to be taken apart this far. And uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, flush this stuff out in, uh, in some water because it needs a bath because uh, that will dissolve all the mud. The, um, this, I still can't quite see through it. So we're gonna, a little bit of a scrub to kind of get it cleared out some. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. Uh huh. So that's uh, a couple of the wasps that never quite figured out how to get out. So uh, yeah, so that is a, uh, yeah, because basically they probably broke through. And yeah, you can tell this is an old one because it actually has a real asbestos string on it. Um, because they don't break, they're, they're very sturdy. Um, yeah, so they probably saw the light, smelled the fresh air, went out that direction and were met by a screen and they never got any further and that was it. They just basically uh, born and died all in the same spot. So there we go, there's that. This needs to be clean, this needs to be flushed out and uh, then we'll be good to go. So we'll, uh, we'll see you back in just a minute. Well, this is Michael from the future, and he's going to be a bit more than just a minute. Uh, this is going to end up being a three-part series because I didn't want to leave any details out, and I wanted you guys to see all the ins and outs of what we went across in going through one of these lanterns, and it's, uh, it's actually really quite interesting. So stay tuned for the next episode.